Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Victor, and I come from Sweden. But at the moment, I'm working in China for a Chinese dating company called uh, Tantan. So uh, let's uh, start. At uh, Tantan, we use uh, Postgres for basically all our data storage require usage, and. Uh, Tantan is a dating app that you have on your phone. Uh, and on our backend, we have a, a code in Go, and then we have uh, Postgres as our database. And, and of course, we use uh, PostGIS uh, on top of Postgres. And one of the core features of Tantan is that uh, we suggest users for you to look at. And because Tantan is a mobile application, we uh, we rank uh, the users that we show to you based on uh, their locations, so that we want to show users that are nearby. Because if I'm close to you, yeah, then probably the likelihood that I will like you is higher than if we are very far away from each other. And uh, for suggesting these users, we have a very big. Uh, SQL uh, select statement that basically selects out uh, a number of users for you to look at. And suggesting these users is quite uh, difficult actually. Uh, and that is because of two reasons. And the number one reason is that, yeah, how should we do this? Of course, yeah, I just said that we want to rank users based on their uh, distance from you. But there are also, of course, many other uh, um, properties that can be used for ranking people. For example, their popularity, their age, uh, their gender. But uh, for this talk, I won't talk so much about the exact uh, method to rank users. Instead, I will talk about the uh, other property, namely, how can we do this quickly? At uh, Tantan, we have around uh, uh, 64 servers now, I think. Uh, that do this uh, ranking query and uh, during our peak hours we do about uh, 1000 uh, queries per second to retrieve a list of users so uh, the load on our system is quite high because of this ranking and I think our 60 servers or 64 servers they spend around 50% of their uh, execution time to run this uh, ranking query So what is this new exciting functionality that uh, I had on the topic of this talk? Well, basically it's this little thing here. Uh, it's a new operator available in PostGIS 2.2. And with it you can rank, uh, you can, uh, rank or order by uh, four dimensions instead of the previous two dimensions that you have uh, in the previous version of PostGIS. And this ranking can be done using index, so it's pretty fast. And I will talk more about the details of this uh, later in a couple of slides. Uh, yeah. So my plan for today was that I will uh, show you how this can be done. And I will use uh, Tantan to illustrate uh, the use case for this. But of course, uh, this is not restricted to our use case. I think it can be used in many other applications. For example, let's say that you, have, you want to have the 100 closest cars to you that are of a certain age, maybe between 10 and 15 years old. Uh, then this could potentially also be useful. Uh, so. Uh, to show you uh, how this uh, indexing can be used, I have uh, three properties that are useful for uh, uh, suggesting users, for ranking users. And I picked them because uh, they each one of them have different uh, properties, they work differently. Uh, so you can get a feel of different use cases. Uh, so the first one is uh, popularity, then we have age, and the third one is uh, activity, the last active time of a user. And yeah, I will uh, talk more uh, details of these uh, three uh, use cases uh, in a minute. So if we start by looking at the two dimensions, 
the normal ordering just based on locations. Uh, then is basically, well, we have x here with the longitude and we have latitude y going up. Not very complicated at all. Uh, then a little bit, a little bit problem can be if you happen to be very close to the North or South Pole, or if you are out in the Pacific Ocean, because then the latitude and the longitude will uh, wrap around. If you come to the most north of the Earth, then the latitude becomes, uh, yeah, it wraps around it. And the same with the longitude. If you pass the, uh, uh, what's, uh, yeah, around the Earth, then it will wrap around from positive to negative. But for Tantan's use case, uh, we only care about, well, basically, we don't have any uses in the North or South Pole, and we don't have any uses in the middle of the ocean. So it's not very relevant for us, uh, which is very good. So to show you this more in detail, I have uh, created a little table here. Uh, I users that contains uh, uh, I pre-filled in my examples I have pre-filled it with around one million users from our uh, production system, and it basically contains yeah, we have a user ID, <coughs> birthday, the location, active time, and uh, something called popularity. And the interesting thing here is the uh, location that is a uh, geometry type which basically store this uh, uh, x and y coordinate uh, in a very basic way. And finally, we create an index of this location so that we can use uh, two-dimensional uh, indexing uh, on this uh, column. Uh, I should also mention that PostGIS have uh, another data type called geography that will take into account uh, the roundness of the Earth. Uh, but it's a little bit more limited in the functionality it supports and it's not as fast. So for now, for here I will just go with geometry and it's good enough for, for these kind of use cases. Maybe if you want to deal with, for example, plotting a flight path from one city to another, yeah, then it will be more important with uh, uh, geography. But for this user ranking, uh, geometry is fine. Uh, and then selecting from this table uh, becomes like this. <coughs> so we select from this table and we order by how far away they are from us. And since we are in Singapore, so I just use the <coughs> X and Y of Singapore. And then a little limit of 10. So we take the 10 closest users to us here. And then by using this operator, uh, this query will operate very fast. And uh, it runs in about yeah, less than one millisecond uh, for uh, my million test users. So yeah, this basically sets the ground for my coming examples. So let's start at the first case. Popularity. In Tantan, we think that the more popular users are basically better users in our system. And uh, also, our research has shown that, yeah, it's better to make the popular user a little bit more popular by showing them uh, more, yeah, by ranking them higher so they are shown earlier. And what do I mean by popularity? Yeah, uh, we define popularity as the number of likes you get uh, divided by the number of likes plus the number of dislikes that you get. So if you are, yeah, if you have 10 likes and uh, zero dislikes, yeah, then you're popular one. And if you uh, have zero likes but uh, 10 dislikes, yeah, then your popularity is uh, zero, basically, yes. Um, and the nice thing with this popularity is that it becomes a number between zero and one. So it's pretty easy to reason about uh, <coughs> what happens when we use this later. So, 
So what does this query look like when we want to take advantage when we want to have the popularity affect our ranking of users? Well, the normal way of doing this that we actually currently do this in production is uh, by first selecting a pretty big amount of users, in this case 100, and then in the second part of this query we take those 100 users and order them by the distance times the popularity, and then a limit of 10, which means that among these 100 users we pick out the 10 uh, best ones based on the distance times the popularity. And since popularity is better when it's higher and distance is better when it's smaller, uh, I just made a one divided by popularity plus one. Uh, and yeah, plus one is in case popularity is zero, so we don't have any division by zero problems. And now, the now comes the question: How can we make this into a 3D query instead, so we can use index for this second part here. Well, the key insight is that we can put popularity on the z-axis in this way. We have longitude, we have latitude, and then we have popularity going up. And transformed into SQL code, it becomes something like this. Uh, we add a column, call it location popularity. We use the same geometry data type as before. But <coughs> when we fill it with data, we put, yeah, we use this uh, make point, then we take the x and the y, and then we insert our popularity there. And then finally, in the bottom, we uh, create an index on this new uh, column. And the important thing is here that you need to use this, uh, uh, you need to specify that you want to be, that you want to use more than two dimensions. And you can also see here that I have scaled the popularity by uh, multiplying it with 0 0.01. That is so that later when we do our queries, uh, we want, <coughs> well, basically, of course, we want the popularity to play one part, but we also want to have the distance play its part. So we need to scale it down a little bit because, yeah, so it comes into reasonable size compared to the x and y. Um, so, uh, basically this scaling thing that I did here, multiplying it by 0 0.01, I, I just tried it out to figure out the proper number. Uh, and I think this is the best method, because then you can try different values and see uh, which one is the best one, which one give you the uh, ordering that you want. And to use the four-dimensional query, or three-dimensional query, we have to use this new operator that I showed a couple of slides back. And this is directly from the documentation of this. It says that uh, this operator returns the MD distance between the centroids of A and B bounding boxes. And then that this uh, operator will make use of any indexes. Uh, and then uh, that this also has to be used in the order by uh, part of the query, but there's no problem for us since, yeah, we will just use it there anyway. And the fact that it returns the distance between the centroids of the bounding boxes is also no problem because we have basically point locations for our users and the bounding box of a point location, yeah, that's also a point, so there's no problem. So now when we have our operator, we have our data, then we can rewrite our query into this. Uh, we select from users, we order by, and then we have our new uh, column, location popularity, the operator, and we make a point where we are, x and y, and then we add zero, because we want the popularity to be as close to zero as possible and then limit by 10 again. Uh, so in this case, the query become pretty easy to understand and read, but a little bit more difficult to reason about, because you can't immediately see how the uh, 
popularity affect this order by by just looking at this query. So moving on, uh, the second case I want to talk about is age. Of course, when you have a dating application, the age of those people that you look at is very important. Uh, I think most people have some uh, age requirements for their potential future boyfriends or girlfriends. Uh, but in contrast to popularity, this is a strict filtering criteria. We don't use the age to show younger people uh, earlier or older people earlier. Instead, we are just interested in either you are within this age range or you're not. So, if you just look at our table again, uh, we can see, yeah, I had a birth date as a date column here, uh, which we can use for this query. So, the normal way of doing this query would be to just add a where clause. Where age of the birth date is between 20 and 30 years. And actually this looks, this works very fine. It works perfect in most cases. The problem is that it can create a problem in some special case. And the problem uh, can be seen on this slide. Some users uh, like to look at strange ages. <laughs> in this case, uh, 74 and 75 year olds. Or actually, yeah, between 74 and 75. Um, and this creates a pretty big problem. Uh, and you can easily see this problem in this next slide. Here I have uh, done uh, explain analyze on the query uh, to show what it does. And we can see here that it removed uh, almost 200,000 uh, rows by this uh, order by, no, by this uh, filter here. And then the execu execution time was uh, 500 milliseconds. And this is of course uh, not very good. Uh, it's actually a pretty big problem and a real problem. Uh, on my slide here I have a a screenshot from WeChat where we had a small conversation. This was from the day after we allowed 16 and 70 year old people to sign up on Tantan. And yeah, basically it started out like this. Uh, a lot of suggested queries seems to run there. Some suggested have been running for two minutes, blah, blah, blah. Let's kill the queries. Obviously not a very good situation to be in. Uh, so, what can we do about this? Well, when we actually had this problem in our production environment and a couple of minutes later where we had time to look into why is this happening, we noticed that the problem was that some of these 16 and 70 year old people, they were just interested in looking at other 16 and 70 year old. Quite reasonable, but the problem becomes that, yeah, if you have 100 of those in the database and they are spread out geographically, then basically this, uh, the big query has to look through all of them and become very slow. So what could we do to prevent this? Well, one solution would be to restrict it so you're not allowed to look at certain ranges. Uh, maybe you're not allowed to look for 74 year old people. You have to look for, uh, I don't know, 60 to 80. Another solution would be to add a distance restriction to our query. Um, you could do it so that, yeah, if you want to look at ver this very strict uh, search criteria, then you, uh, then you only look, uh, I don't know, 10 kilometers, 100 kilometers. Uh, away from you and not more. And then the third option would be to uh, add the age to the geometry index that we uh, have. So obviously uh, when we had this problem in production we didn't have time to do any fancy solutions. Uh, so what we did was we added a distance <laughs> restriction uh, so that yeah, if you are 16, 17 year old yeah, then you are only allowed to see those users 
uh, within uh, uh, now I don't remember the exact number, but maybe 50 kilometers away from you. And that took care of the problem uh, for that moment. But for this presentation, of course, we want to add the age to the geo index. So how can we do that? Well, just as for popularity, we add a column, location age. We fill it with data, and then we create an index. And when filling it with data, we take the x, we take the y, and then we take uh, the year from your birth date and divide it by uh, 100,000. And this is because later when we do the ordering, we don't want the age to affect the ordering. But we want to have the age inside so that we can restrict the query uh, to only look at a specific uh, age span. So if we move on to the query, it uh, looks like this. Um, we select from users, and here comes the interesting part. Where this uh, location H is within this uh, triple AND operator means that location H has to be within and this uh, bounding box that we create. And here I have defined a bounding box to include every possible uh, x and y value. Uh, we see here from x can be between 180 and minus 180, y can be between 90 and minus 90. So it includes all of them. Uh, but then for the year, your birth date, we only include those uh, 74 and 75 year old people. And as you see, I have to use the same uh, scaling factor here. Uh, and then of course we use the same uh, ordering with this. Uh, Four uh, yeah, the four-dimensional ordering. And if we look at the query plan, we see that our problem has been fixed. The ex execution plan over here is down to 19. And we can see that we use an index condition to uh, do the filtering. So yeah, everything looks fine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why do you use? Um, can you go back to that slide? Why do you use a bounding box? Negative hundred eighteen, nineteen. Shouldn't be restricted to China or Singapore? Yeah. For me, for my example here, uh, I basically took all the positions because I didn't want to think too much about it. I, in our application, we have a, actually we have a setting where you can decide how far away you want the users to be from you. So you can be, let's say, uh, 10 kilometers away, 20 kilometers away. Yeah, you can decide for yourself you, uh, which range you want to look at. And yeah, for this example, I just took uh, everything because then I don't, otherwise, let's say that I only want to see the users within 10 kilometers from me. Uh, then it's a little bit tricky to calculate what these numbers should be in my box here. So then I would have to explain that on a slide as well. So yeah, that's the reasons why I uh, took all of them. Uh, yeah, so here's the explain analyze again. And if we look at the actual output of this, the, user, the real users age that were returned by my query, they look like this. And the interesting thing here is that it actually returned a 75-year-old person and a couple of users that are 73-year-old. And this will be a problem. Maybe not for those users that are looking for 74-year-old. Be because yeah, I would assume that they can also handle a 75 and 73-year-old guy. But of course, if you're looking at, let's say, you're looking at 18 plus, and then you get a 17 year old. Yeah, that's not so good. So we need to do something about this. And I think the reason for this problem to happen is that uh, the geo index is uh, lossy. And also we scale the age to a very small number. And those two things uh, probably create this problem that is not exact. Uh, 
so what we need to do is basically we add back the uh, the old where statement that where age between 74 and 75 and this will fix the problem uh, so let's move on uh, to the final property that we will look at activity so activity is the last active time and this is interesting because uh, if I like you and you like me and yeah then we can start chatting and then it's, it's of course good if uh, if we are both active at the same time I don't want to if you are, uh, were active in our app uh, one month ago yeah if I send you a message you probably won't reply to me so uh, that's why we also want to rank by activity and the old style the normal style of doing this query would be just as popularity we select out 100 users order by the distance and then among those 100 users we take the distance times uh, the activity time how many seconds ago were you active did I do it yeah maybe I have some small mistake here in my slide anyway uh, Yeah, let's move on. Uh, the interesting thing here is that what is the difference between popularity, age, and time, the activity time? Well, popularity was a number between 0 and 1 for everyone. Age is also a very bounded problem. It's between, in our case, between 16 and 100. But yeah, I imagine that most use cases have also a bounded age. However, time increases infinitely in one direction it always goes up so when we add this column and later when we do the query we have to be a bit uh, careful but adding it is quite simple we just uh, well put the uh, let's we'll see what we do here we take the uh, number of seconds divided by 60 to get minutes and then we scale it by dividing by 100 thousand 10,000 and this should ge give it a pretty similar uh, strength uh, ranking strength as the location uh, as you will see and then to select with this uh, time parameter the activity we can do it in this way basically we want the activity to be as close to now as possible so if I just quickly go back here we define that activity time the set goes up 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 all the time and it's the number of seconds so it will be a pretty big number and it goes up and then now if we take the number of seconds from the epoch to now it's an even bigger number so that means that yeah, those users that are closest to this big number uh, should be shown first. And then of course we have the Singapore location again. Uh, so what have we looked at so far? If we take a little bit of a review. Well, first we looked at the X and Y location, uh, how to do the very basic query. Uh, then we talked a little bit about popularity, age, and activity. But now, of course, maybe you're thinking, hmm, we talked about uh, two dimensions and we talked about three dimensions. Where is the fourth dimension? Well, since I now explain the basics of how to add one of these three to the f as the third dimension, I think you can pretty easily understand what my plan is for utilizing four dimensions basically we just pick two of these popularity age and activity and uh, in my uh, next slide here I have picked popularity and age and just as before we first add a column geometry with location popularity and age 
we fill it with data, and finally we create an index. And popularity, yeah, that was calculated in this way, and then the age in this way, so we just put them there. Popularity becomes the Z, and uh, the age becomes the M, or the fourth dimension. And then for the actual query, it's pretty simple. Uh, the ordering here, we want the popularity to be uh, close to zero again. And for uh, the age, well, basically we don't care, so we put zero there as well. And then for our search <coughs> box, uh, of course we must allow for any popularity in that one. So yeah, here I just took from 100 to minus 100. But since popularity can not be such a big number, we could have used smaller numbers as well. Um, so now when you have looked at this, maybe you are curious, do we get any benefit from doing these pretty complicated things? Well, I made some benchmarks uh, in uh, my office. And yeah, this is from a table I, I used uh, around 1 million rows from our production and then uh, ran these different queries. In the bottom here we have the normal location query. It's extremely fast. And then the other queries. And basically what we can see here is that yeah, we get a pretty big benefit in the location plus age, where age was the 74 year olds. Because yeah, actually it doesn't even fit on this uh, in this graph here. But in all the other cases, uh, our query becomes quite a bit slower. Uh, yeah, we have the four dimensional query, it's 50, and this one here, location and popularity, 33, 34. And yeah, basically everything except the location activity query becomes very slow, I would say. And as I said in the beginning of our talk, uh, at Tantan we have. Uh, 64 servers doing this query and if we increase the query time by like 10 or even more then it maybe we don't can't afford 10 times more servers so this is a bit of a problem actually <coughs> so the query times did not really impress us here uh, maybe if we look at the index it gets more interesting uh, this is the different indexes that we created. In the blue, I have the indexes when they are fresh, and in orange, when I made them a bit bloated. I updated every row in the table. Um, yeah, and then it becomes like this, and we can see that, yeah, the index, sure, it increases a little bit. Uh, but the difference between two, two dimensions and three dimensions is not that big. So if the query times were okay, yeah, then this, Indexes, yeah, they would the size would be fine. Uh, we need a little bit more RAM, but yeah, it would be okay, I guess. Uh, so then we come to the conclusion of this. So for basically for popularity, we can see that yeah, maybe it improves the ranking a little bit because we avoid the case where maybe the most popular user is a little bit more far away from you and not among the 100 closest one. However, it makes the ranking formula much more difficult to reason about because now it's like hidden away in that geometry table, uh, geometry column. It also makes the query pretty much slower. For age, it's Actually, this is, I guess, maybe the success uh, trial, because it actually fixes our main problem here, that if you have an outlier age, uh, you only want to look at 74-year-olds, then it actually fixes that case and makes it fast. However, the average query time also becomes slower, and you have to make special care so you don't disturb your normal ordering and of course you need that extra care to make sure you don't return rows that you don't want. 
And yeah, the story is similar in time that yeah, maybe it improves the ranking a little bit if the most nearby users were active a long time ago. Yeah, then this will help a little bit. Uh, on the other hand, it also makes the ranking formula quite difficult to reason about. Uh, and yeah, it makes the query slower. So if we move to the next slide and my final conclusion of this is that it's quite a lot more <laughs> difficult to use these uh, three and four dimension things for uh, this kind of like hacky usage that I tried here. <coughs> and uh, I guess if you went to the keynote opening of FOSS Asia, he said, uh, one of the speakers said something like, yes, you don't learn from success, it's from the failures you learn things. And I guess maybe this is uh, connected to this. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, if you want to use this, I think uh, the best path forward is to at least try it out quite carefully and test a lot first. Uh, yeah, that's uh, basically it for me. Uh, any questions? Yeah? Uh, two questions, please. Yeah? Uh, roughly, how many users and roughly how fine a grain on your location? Like, is it street address or is it town or...? No, we have the uh, location reported by your phone. So basically, okay, thank you. so How that is basically you? like, yeah, I don't know, one, sometimes it's 100 meters, sometimes yeah. it's 10 meters. Yeah. How many users? Uh, we have around two and a half, three million users per day. Thank you. So, yeah. I think it's uh, my experience with uh, trying to uh, improve the performance, so trying to uh, search for special free. Yeah. We're actually working with the uh, regards volume of data mm -hmm. and trying to search history search. What we're, what we're doing is actually with, we're trying to uh, use the uh, users' uh, uh, political boundaries or geographic boundaries uh -huh. and if they accept based on the boundaries and then we find the, the search. Uh, you just draw something like overlap. Alright. Then you can minimize the... Uh, uh, yeah, of course. It's a little bit, uh, yeah, uh, for this uh, presentation I just focus on this uh, three, four uh, dimensional indexing things. In, in Tantan, for example, if you have already looked at someone, you have already liked or disliked someone, then we have to filter out those users. And uh, if, if I only want to look at girls and you're a guy, then I shouldn't see you. But if I like you, anyway, and then for you, maybe you are not interested in looking at me. So then, yeah, basically the whole query becomes pretty complicated and uh, yeah uh, it helps in some cases but at the same time it can become troublesome um, for the location wise right is first recorded or is it on a real time basis uh, basically we update the location every five minutes or if you move more than uh, uh, 200 meters I think so basically every request that the phone is doing uh, to our uh, backend servers uh, sends the location as well. And then we check if, if is this new location, uh, like did you change your location? Uh, and if you did, yeah, then we update it. The problem for us becomes that if you have very restrictive searches, uh, for example, this 16, 17 year old, if you are the one of the only 16 year olds in the whole of China, and there are one million other users in China, then of course we want to return, I mean, we want to give you something to look at. So if you yeah, so then we can't really restrict your search range too much because uh, it's not good for the user experience. Because, yeah, if you don't get any users to look at, then you can't do anything in that, uh, basically. Uh, yeah. Uh, any 
Anything else? Anything else? One last question, perhaps? Okay. That was a great presentation, Victor. Thanks a lot. Thank you.